Good afternoon, everyone. We are lucky enough to have with us a panel with uh, vast experience. Uh, with us is Manuel Casanova, the general director of uh, CISA. We also have Ignacio Alvarez. He's the technical director of automation and industrial digitalization, digitization of uh, Siemens. We have Jose Antonio Cascallana from the Cain Cyber Security Innovation Center, Telefonica Cyber Security and Cloud Tech. And finally, we have uh, with us Sergio Vidal, Commercial Director of Automation of Industrial Processes of Schneider Electric. We have uh, representatives from important engineering centers, uh, manufacturers, tele manufacturers t uh, technological centers, and I think this is going to be a very interesting panel to finish this uh, morning session. And I would like to start by putting in context, welcome to you all, first of all, I would like to put in context what uh, critical uh, sectors are. What sectors are we talking about? Well, we're talking about uh, the electric sector, the transportation sector, the ro railway sector. And here we have representatives with uh, vast experience in uh, electric, but also in oil and gas. Uh, oil and gas is one of the most mature sectors uh, elsewhere in the world. And we're going to talk about this type of sector. And we're going to talk about industrial digitalization in the industry 4.0. And in a former panel, some of the CSIOs from Spanish organizations talked about digital transformation. And now what we're going to do is talk about uh, what these challenges are for these critical uh, industrial sectors. And I would like to put this in context uh, by looking at the main projects that are being launched uh, in uh, Industry 4.0 in industrial digitalization. And I will sh start by showing you a, a short study where I would like to highlight four types of uh, main projects in the Industry 4.0 industry, the main uh, one being monitoring uh, results. We're talking about efficiency with 27%. But also, we're looking at improving prediction. The prediction at the industry level, quality control, and obviously maintenance and management, predictive management, which I believe all the members sitting with us here uh, are working uh, on this kind of project uh, in the organizations. But we are not only talking about industrial processes, we are also have hurdles and we have difficulties when it comes to working around Industry 4.0 about digitalization. And the main hurdles and uh, constraints, and this is a study, again, that shows that m most of the um, limits are resistance to change, uh, it's not always easy to bring about changes. So this might be the first uh, challenge that digitalization finds uh, in these critical uh, sectors, but also the lack of training and lack of standards. We can't really name uh, an industrial digitalization standard that can be used. And I think this is something we will talk about also. And also a high risk since investment for industrial digitalization is, is not really cheap. So how should organizations be prepared for industrial digitalization? Well, I propose three actions to be completed for preparing ourselves for digitalization. One of these would be to assess, assess the risks of 4.0 industry projects to have our own capacities and not only resorting to providers for digitalization, but rather have my own capacity. And finally, the new resilience which uh, is known f not only for being able to respond to any disaster, but to predict and to anticipate disasters. And this is what we're going to be talking about. And I would like to start with a question um, for Ignacio Alvarez. How should organizations prepare themselves uh, in those critical sectors in order to adopt uh, Industry 4.0 but with a risk that can be taken, uh, so without all being disastrous. So, in principle, I would say, but um, let me start by the uh, with the end of, of your question. Where I don't think it is an acceptable risk. It is 
a need that I'm going to explain in two, three minutes. Well, really, we need to strengthen six pillars, three vertical pillars and three horizontal pillars. And all of them are linked with each other. Uh, so in terms of the um, um, vertical uh, pillars is the time to market. It is very important because we as users, we don't want to buy what, the, what they want to uh, sell us. But we want to buy the latest product um, and, and at the best possible price. And if you can keep it updated or change it in every two years, even better. So the time to market is key. Um, that is resolved with the digital twin. So that is going to say whether the risk is acceptable or not. So if my competition is working on, on the time to market and is able to obtain uh, profit 30% uh, faster than me or, or get results that are proven, is well, it's not mean that the risk is acceptable, is that I have to do it. The second factor is availability, and third one is efficiency, as you said in the introduction. So if we need to uh, produce in a cheaper way, efficiency is a, is a, is a clear example. The, the lesser I pay in electricity, uh, the less I, I use electricity, the less I pay. So um, then the, we have the horizontal pillars. So first of one, if you allow me to say, the information and not data. To, to me, data is, is useless. <laughs> what I want is information. Uh, the information uh, uh, represents and explains data. And we also talk about connectivity. I think connectivity is the necessary element to get those data, but not the end in itself. And, and if we link that to the time to market and the digital twin, all, all those data that we get from the digital twin and what we get from that uh, production, we add it to the artificial intelligence, then um, all is good. We are linking everything even more so that this information linked with uh, digital uh, twin and connectivity and data will be able to detect cybersecurity attack. prevent and defend us against cybersecurity attack. So if I have a machine learning of my equipment and I also detect a combination of events such as something that comes through an IDS, well, well that, is, that is probably is a cyber attack. The fifth pillar is cybersecurity. In the end, um, this digitalization um, leads to more connectivity, so more attack uh, surface. And the last pillar is training and awareness. So if I reinforce all the pillars, but the, the people working with me or the management of the company is not aware, is not on the same page, um, the it is all useless. I can have the best um, f software, hardware, uh, everything, but if the weakest link is the people and they are not aware, um, we're not all on the same page, um, everything is lost. Yeah, I fully agree. People is key for those pillars. So moving on to Manuel, which is in your opinion, what are the, the main risks in cybersecurity? 
that should uh, the organization be concerned about? As Natsu was saying, one of the main problems of the industry or, or large critical infrastructures such as railways, electrics, etc., is the is the awareness of uh, its uh, staff and employees. We need a lot of investment on equipment, on analytics and software, hardware. But the most important part is personnel training. We need to train em employees in the use of the systems and, and uh, softwares. Uh, software is, is more and more specialized because the attacks um, are increasingly complex as well. So. We, we now see attacks that, uh, that um, we, can, we can not have even imagined uh, f five or seven years ago. So this is changing very rapidly. Software is um, being updated very, very, and they updated very quickly. So we need to train personnel. In our experience, is that we are starting to get people aware, especially railroads and, and centralized control system are more and more critical because the level of operation is more and more exposed. Software is exposed to huge amounts of data via internet and externet. So the security if of those data is becoming more and more critical. And the same applies for the following. Um, operators uh, need to have uh, operations from outside because the um, technology allows them to do so, um, to do many things uh, remotely. And this leads to a serious problem because O op operations from uh, 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 operations remotely can can lead to to yeah, unexpected incidents, and this has a lot of implications um, in terms of the um, electrical network, and this has consequences for other sectors as well. So we have to focus on two pillars. We have to increase awareness, and we have to uh, train uh, and get more training. So the lack of capacity of technological um, organizations and, and the lack of capacity to tackle uh, digitalization are key and are the main risk. Right. What do you think about this, Jose Antonio, based on your experience? Well, after the very good context um, information that Nacho gave us and the experience of Manuel, there is little to say. Most of um, most of this is already said. I would like to thank Infibia for inviting me. I feel at home. And after attending 15 years in ISE, I have been able to see the, the audience and the auditorium from the stage. We're talking about critical in infrastructure and uh, activities where the key is the process rather than the information. A mechanical failure in, in a plant or an infrastructure can generate a disaster. Uh, economic loss, but a cyber attack, with a cyber attack, it is not only um, econ economic loss, but also personal losses or environmental losses. In uh, July this year, Garner published a, a, a paper that said that cyber criminals uh, in 2025, cyber criminals, Will, will be um, able to um, to manipulate critical infrastructures. They seem to be uh, getting armed to um, 
to obtain um, industrial processes? Um, will they be able to ask for a ransom as well? Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe. It, but this is uh, concerning. The um, critical infrastructures and OT environments are very appealing for um, uh, cyber criminals and also for the competition and also for other states. So risk exposure, especially after digitalization and the increase of the uh, ex exposure uh, surface is uh, much larger. And, and then I would like to give you a few details the r on the risks. Um, the main risk is the human factor. We will be, uh, we will always uh, yeah, keep on using USBs and uh, doing things that we shouldn't do. In terms of um, operation technologies, the modification of parameters, the control processes, that this can cause cause damages and it can um, lead to um, loss of um, human lives uh, or losses to the environment. And, and unauthorized ac accesses is also a risk. Um, attacks, uh, the denial of service, yeah, yeah an endless uh, series of uh, risk. Sergio, in your opinion, what are the, the two main risks? Well, what else to say after what my colleagues have already um, explained? We should think that we we have in front of us uh, the, the, the industry in Western Europe is is of um, is an old industry um, that comes from uh, the past. There are obsolete uh, facilities um, that that need to be renewed. This is a challenge, and in my view, there are many companies, maybe not so many in the uh, OT sectors, but many of them can give, can provide this solution. And um, companies should um, take that path in order to be competitive. All this is linked to a level of cyber security that needs to be um, maximum. We're talking about critical infrastructure. This is very uh, serious, we're talking about national security. And in that sense, the government uh, should back the regulation and should work on the, on the legal framework so that these facilities <coughs> So that, so that these facilities comply with all the requirements on cybersecurity. As um, <clears throat> you have listened uh, during the presentation, and the, the talks, um, we are in a good position in terms of cybersecurity, but in terms of OT, there is still a long way to go. <clears throat> We've talked about Israel and the, the Middle East. Um, where there have been very serious attacks, where the, the national security of, of countries have been put at risk. So <coughs> companies should really uh, wake up and start working on, on this. We need to raise awareness because in the end, the key is the person. Internal processes are necessary, um, internal governance is necessary in order to be able to be the first line of defense. So let me 
quote a sentence that you you you, you said. Um, um, companies have to react. So what the, what the resources that the companies can use to um, activate this 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 capacity in a secure way. So depending on the size of the company, they can afford um, um, bigger or smaller uh, cyber security department. But uh, cyber security is advancing rapidly. It is constantly changing. And for a company keeping up to date with information and having a, a technical department that keeps uh, updated is is very difficult and maybe third parties come into play here but they should invest on um, on an organization an internal organization that provides governance on people and on the processes and that should be within the company I think that's um, where the company should invest more because the technolo at the technolo technological level should maybe be passed on to partners uh, or to third parties that, um, yeah, that keep updated. Jose Antonio, how do you think that this capacity in cybersecurity should be adopted to uh, reach a good level of digitalization? So, I usually uh, reply to this question with uh, with a simile. So, we are in a in, <coughs> in a castle that is isolated, but it is vulnerable. So, how do you protect that castle? What do we need to move to the digital world hmm. before the digitalization? That isolated country has an, uh, an asset inventory of uh, people and accesses uh, that needs to be kept. So we need to control with assets and, and what uh, devices um, the company has. And so uh, we need to keep track of the um, uh, risk exposure. And we also have to think about the shadow ID uh, so those uh, th those fields that are outside um, the cyber security so if, um, in, you cannot have someone um, using a, is an external USB stick on, on one computer of your company so uh, access control is very important as well so no one can uh, access uh, a nuclear plant and even if you are able to enter as a visitor you will only be able to visit uh, some departments so the same should apply to to, um, di to um, digitalization access control is key both um, um, on, on site and remotely and we have um, surveillance video cameras um, in the streets. Um, well, we we, have, we should do that as well um, in our companies. So, network control is uh, is key as well. We come back to to training, contingency plans, asset protection, and surveillance. In terms of how to do it. Well, we should choose the best providers, um, use the best people for the job within the company. <coughs> We've seen that one of the main uh, problems is risk aversion uh, and aversion to, to change. So training, capacitation, yeah. So I, I if I can give you an, an advice, is to recommend the services of, of INSIBE. I think at um, CCI, we 
um, we are leading the way here. We have um, ma uh, several masters on cybersecurity. Thanks, thanks, thanks for mentioning us. We oh, also have Ignacio Alvarez, who is a teacher at this school. Yeah. Jose Antonio, if you want to elaborate on that. Yes, um, I'd like you to identify those uh, skills that should always be there for a company to be able to tackle digitalization. Yes, I subscribe everything they said, but I'm going to go, maybe go on a tangent here, and I'm going to uh, mention regulation here. But it is it is it is difficult, but uh, the only thing that has not been said is the. Um, s 62443, which is a regulation that talks about the players. The, the players are the manufacturer, the owner, and the um, user. So sometimes the, the client or the owner is small and do not have the um, necessary resources. So coordinate with your producer and with, with your integrator to be able to be um, cyber security compliant. Yeah, and count on third parties. Yes, um, um, SMEs cannot probably do this on their own. So even if they don't have the possibilities to do that, they have to raise awareness among their staff. Thanks very much, um, Ignacio. And Manuel, please, what are the capacities that you're adopting within your organization to tackle digitalization? How do you do it? Yes, as you all know, everyone agrees that uh, um, personal training is a long-term project. You need infrastructure, you need labs, you need uh, complex software, which is expensive. So training is the critical part of being able to provide the service. So, uh, we uh, work as, a, as an integrator in, in the market. We um, sell very specialized software for critical systems, and without this um, this personnel, this specialist personnel, we are not able able to provide uh, the services. Um, no, no matter um, how good our uh, systems are, if you don't have the right uh, personnel, uh, expert in in all the applications and systems and uh, with the right knowledge on cyber security um, the, the, the systems are more and more complex if you don't have all that um, well, it is it's very difficult so training is key but um, even more than that long-term uh, training so that is one of the m most important things for small companies. And, and keeping the talent is also very difficult. It is a competitive market, global market, so um, uh, someone can go uh, move to Barcelona, to New York, to anywhere, uh, or work remotely to their own labs. So uh, keeping talent is complicated. But the, the companies that are able to differentiate themselves are those who are uh, who retain talent. Very interesting thing that happened in the 20th century. Kent, John Kendall was asked once why a small digital against IBM. Uh, he was asked why. Um, a small company was able to compete with a large company such as uh, IBM and he said that small is beautiful a large company um, might not be able to retain talent and um, might be slower to react so 
the companies that are in this sector need to keep the talent, to look for talent, identify it, and keep it. That's what um, any uh, company should do. Yes, talent is key. I think that is uh, what we have to um, take home from this panel. Thanks very much to all the panelists for sharing their experience.